everybody Francisco, uh, August. Biscuits and Blues, as long as they're still not flooded. When am I playing the baked potato? July 23rd. I'm playing this weekend, though, in Pasadena, Long Beach, and Tarzana. So, hope you all are well. Steely Dan? Oh, man, I don't want to embarrass myself. Although my favorite is... to be home been on the road like fucking crazy and uh, it's nice to just be sitting here I'm letting out uh, frustration and boredom on my amplifiers and my pedal boards right now so that's always fun I like this new pedal board a lot yeah this is a new guitar uh, this one I got in the UK a couple months ago the gray guitar really nice gold Ron Ellis pickups Mark Rudder's bridge Made by Thomas Gray. It's really nice. I like, man, Ron's P90s and the neck are so nice and dark. I just like how dark it is. and dark. <laughs> what amps am I running? I'm actually playing through two amps right now just because I can. I'll even show you because I'm feeling that what kind of way. My old Vox Cambridge Reverb tube one filled with molars and my trusty PR12 my number one. So that's what I got going on and I'm playing through the new board the big board although right now nothing is on but that's a crazy great board that I love. And that's it. Oh, you're up in San Francisco now, bro? Nice. What year is that Vox? Like 63 or 64? don't have the big myriad yet it's coming we're all plumbed for it it would be the word and uh, that's what I know Usual, 13 to 58. Yeah. 
feeling. It's funny, you play like so much in a row. Go home and don't play for a few days. Feel rusty. But I'm having a good time. I've been messing with different sounds and stuff. Preference for Rosewood over Fender. Uh, over Maple. I like both, but if you put a gun to my head, I'd probably pick a Maple Neck Telly or a Maple Neck Strat first. Bruins or Blues? I don't care. <laughs> uh, here's a cool thing I've been, been doing. I programmed up the line six for a few things and I got this cool sound going which is for that whole magnetone thing or like Robin Ward Robert, Robert Ward style guitars all night they're they're a per song thing for me uh, I'm just much more comfortable on fender scale single coil pickups I need that dynamic range and clarity um, but I do love Les Pauls and sometimes they're the right thing you know and I have one on the road with me the last two months in Europe uh, do I sight read yeah kind of not great though <laughs> You're trying to get into jazz, man. Just uh, work on spelling out those chords. You know, I'm no jazz player. I just do my best. But uh, I do give some good tips in my new True Fire course, so that'd be a good one to pick up. Newbie from the Philippines. That's a good name. <laughs> nope, I can't bend them at all. That's why everything is a slot. How's the neck in this position, this P90? It's amazing. I was actually just talking about it. You probably just signed up. Jenkins, what's up? It's nice and dark. to play over the changes Charlie Christian first Charlie Parker Wes Montgomery George Benson listen to Bruce Foreman buy his lessons he's the greatest in the world at playing the changes um, you know that's the stuff I grew, but I mean the stuff I grew up listening to was early stuff Charlie Christian uh, Charlie Parker Dizzy Miles stuff like that uh, Thelonious Monk <laughs> pick no
actually, we were just talking about Australia today. I'm absolutely coming back next year. Just don't know when. Let's hear another guitar. Do I play much acoustic? Not live, but on sessions all the time. Uh, you know, I'm here in the house. Lately, since I got home, I've been playing my Mule Resonator a lot, which is a monster of a guitar. And I'd pull it out right now, but it's, it's in the house. Because it's the one guitar I keep in the house so I could pick up and play without walking back out to the studio. <laughs> The uh, Volante, the two amp spread. Pretty ruling. 13 still, of course, it never changes. Tube Screamer. I got two two real Tube Screamers. <laughs> Family Ram Tube Screamer or Duelist. I've got them both on the board. I love them both. Uh, you know. The Duelist has been my go-to for the last few years. Where's my Chula? As always, right here. Here's the Chula. to play more than just the telly all the time when you switch your capitation to neck from bridge any tips that's all by feel have I ever played with Doyle no have I ever played with John Mayer no I don't know either one of them what I think of the shanks it's nice but I'm not a big nobles guy but I think it's a great pedal tips on breaking out blah 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 does my family ever travel with you yeah sometimes 
It's not always possible, but sometimes. Uh, ever played on an AC-10? No. What's my favorite turnaround? Uh, this one. <laughs> many Brogners, they're great. You're welcome for Burn to Grow. Uh, I'm proud of it. And there's five unreleased tracks from Burn to Grow coming out next week that I've just been sitting on called the Burn to Grow Sessions Outtakes. So it'll be a little EP coming out uh, in high resolution on my website and on the usual places. Download only. Um, when's the live record coming? I don't know. It's done. I'm sitting on it, quite honestly. Uh, the video is incredible. We play great. I'm very proud of it. But I want to uh, make the best decisions with it as far as releasing it because I feel like it's going to be special and I don't want to, I guess, fuck it up, <laughs> you know. Any thoughts on new Super Amps? No, I don't ever really, uh, have never really tried them. Do I find it hard to sing harmonies? Dude, it's so hard. I open my mouth and the unis uh, root notes come out. <laughs> Harmony is, is something I'm terrible at. Canada, I know I'm trying. I, I, just being honest, I can't figure out a way to get to most places in the states or Canada and not lose money to do it. Uh, first off, I don't have a band, you know. Second off, uh, when I bring guys, it's always whoever's available because I don't have a band. So it's like whoever wants to play with me at that minute because they are willing to take the cheap amount of money I can offer them because I don't make that much money. Um, and, you know, so I go out and play with guys local to the market. So for me to make money is mean I have to... F I have, and also I'm doing this all myself with the help of my wife. So it's like I'm booking everything myself. I'm dealing with all the things to, to you know, book the travel and book, you know, rental cars and uh, backline and, and everything on my own and handling the gigs and clinics sometimes along in the cities. And it's just, it's a lot of work. And I've been on the road for 18 months and I let the ball drop a little bit. And now the back half of my schedule for this year looks slow. So I'm trying to figure out if I can come to a few places around the States the rest of this year like Texas or Chicago, um, but it, it has to make sense. I mean, I would love to fly in and do a clinic and play a couple gigs with some local musicians, but not at the expense of, you know, a plane ticket that isn't even covered by what I'd make on the gig. So it's 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 always this catch-22 of figuring out how to do these things because, you know, I am realizing now that there's an audience because I'm going to all these new places, at least out of the country, and people show up, which is exciting. So I know that if I can get there, people will come to the gigs. It's just a matter of getting there and not being, you know, in the hole, I, I, you know, because uh, that's, that's the key. Because I want to get there. I want to get there, and I want to play for all you guys. Uh, now's, my, now's the time. I, I want to be out there playing for all of you because uh, I feel good about playing and happy and feel like I'm playing well and I have something to say on my instrument and I want people to hear it. Hopefully that makes sense. I will definitely be in Australia again in 2020. Working on that today, actually. Working on that today. Um, you know, I think a lot, of, a lot of that people don't quite grasp, you know. Now that I'm getting relatively more well-known... A lot of times I show up at places and they expect me to be on a, a much bigger level than I'm, than I'm actually on. And they're always shocked that I'm the one coming down to the end of the stage selling the CDs myself. Let alone, you know, carrying the guitars and the amps and the CDs and the shirts and the everything. Doing the driving sometimes. And so, 
you know, and I booked the gigs or at least dealt with the person who booked the gigs and the travel. And so it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. And it's, it's gotten to this level where I can't quite do it all by myself, but I also don't have a lot of help. So who's my favorite blues guitarist ever? Albert King. Do I find it hard to be the breadwinner for my family? I must make a decent profit. I, I do my best. I'm not the breadwinner. My wife works just as hard as I do and always has. And without her, I wouldn't have been able to even reach the level I'm at right now, which is breaking even or making a little bit of money, you know. So, you know, I'm lucky to have a family that everybody works hard, you know. I'm working on U.S. dates. I'm trying. I don't have a booking agent in, in the United States, so it's mostly me making phone calls. And... Uh, I'm behind the eight ball, quite honestly, in the United States. Um, a lot of people don't know who I am in the blues world, in those blues clubs, and it's hard to explain to them, hey, I have a following and people will show up because they don't see me in the blues, whatever, periphery, and uh, here in the States at least. So I'm, I'm starting a lot of ways from scratch in America, and that, that's really sometimes difficult. Uh, it's odd when you go, you know, spend a month in Europe or Australia or S South America or, uh, you know, Japan. You go to these places and sell places out. And people are so excited for you to be there. And then you come home and you, you can't book gigs. It's, uh, it's a major frustration because I know you guys want to see me play. And that's the one thing I want to do more than anything is uh, play for you guys. So I'm working on it. I am working as hard as I possibly can. You know, because it's now or never while I can. While I can work as hard as I can. While I can play as good as I could. While I can do all these things before it, it hits me, you know. Play with Matt Schofield in Iridium. It's easier said than done. First off, Matt doesn't want to... Matt wants to do his own thing. Kirk wants to do his own thing. Uh, as much as you would think that everybody wants to get together all the time because it might be a benefit, it's not actually the case. I try really hard, you know, to sometimes make some of those things happen, and a lot of times guys don't want to do that stuff because they're all working on trying to get their own career going the way they want, and we all are balancing schedules and things. I would love to play with my friends more often because I think it would help us all get to the next level because I know there people would like to see me and Matt play together, me and Kirk play together. I know people want to see that, um, but it's, it's really, really difficult to make those things happen, really tough. <laughs> Uh, I would love to get to Bangkok. Oh, Burn to Grow with Scott's bass lessons. Dude, Scott, Divine, what a dude. What a great guy, and we had a blast at that thing. He had a blast. It was really fun, and there's more coming from that. So, I'm just out here in my studio... Someone asked if I'm happy with my studio. Other than my family, it's the thing I'm happiest in the world about. Uh, I work really fucking hard on this studio, and I'm incredibly proud of it. And it keeps getting better, and it's uh, enabled me to do a lot of things. Brazil, I'm trying, man. I know there's a lot of people in Brazil who want to see me play. I can see it in my stats and in where people are watching from. And I know Brazil is somewhere I have to get. I'm trying, man. Could I play Change It? Uh, yeah, I could play Change It.
<laughs> oh, me and Gales, yeah. It's always fun when Eric and I can get together. He's a good friend and obviously an incredible musician who I love. Yep, Keeping Booze Live Cruise is always fun. Play some Mark Letiri songs? I don't know any Mark Letiri songs. This shit is hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> do i smoke weed actually i have never smoked weed in my life people will be surprised to find this out about me i've never smoked a cigarette i never smoked a joint i've never had a beer never had any alcohol that's just uh me never been into it uh, Seth Rosenblum is a great guitarist and you should get his record which was recorded here at my studio and produced by me so if you like it come make a record here with me <laughs> um, is it true that I'm playing on 13 so it's absolutely true can you see how thick they are just from here <laughs> True Fire Course, I'm glad you're digging. Got to get my octaves back together. I like my action even higher on the strap than my tail. reverb pedal for just spring only the Catlin bread Topanga for everything else the Eventide H9 can you chicken pick on 13s better than 9s I don't know if I can better than 9s but I can play better on 13s than 9s and if you want I can pull out my baby and uh, play some telly telliness Well, I have a YouTube channel, but not like a one that I put a lot of effort into. You're right, it's something I need to do more of, along with most things in life. Just not a lot of hours left in the day when I'm doing it all myself. That Strat is a 57 style, but a newer guitar. Favorite Fender amp, Super Reverb, without question. How do I hold my pick? Just normal. Make sure I'm getting all the questions. Play some Danny Gadden. I can do that. Danny's the baddest. What do I struggle with? I'm not the best, quite honestly, at like finger picking acoustic, like beautiful James Taylor. That stuff makes me nervous when I have to do those types of things. Yeah, my Eminem speaker is 50 watts, so 
60 watt amp, just one would be an issue. Two would be fine. Thoughts on John Mayer? Talented dude. Talented, talented cat. My favorite overdrive pedal, obviously, is the Chula. Which is what you're hearing right there. Because it's so dynamic. Dig in. Have I gotten any new tattoos? No, not for quite a while. I'm Jones and Hart. Can I play some Stevie Ray? I just did. Am I still using Morgan amps? Do, 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 do. I am indeed. Love them. Did I work up to 13s? Uh, a little bit, but I've been playing them now for 24 years almost. 23, 24 years. I never feel like a cold beer. No, just a cold. Coca-Cola in a glass bottle is my favorite thing in the whole world. I mean, at, at the heart, the COT and the Chula are similar. Chula just has a little more headroom and a couple other things to it. Yeah, I had really f a lot of fun with Scott Devine. He's a great dude, really great musician, and that was a really fun session. Glad you liked the Myriad. I'm 39. I'll be 40 years old in October. How long since I shaved? Uh, a month. It's about time. Take it back down a notch. <laughs> Funny question. Uh, that's what's going on here. Let's try this sound. favorites is a ring mod that doesn't get in the way. <laughs> string gauge, string gauge, string gauge. 13 to 58. Should I just pin that atop anything I, anytime I do anything that I use 13s? Because <laughs> everybody still asks a hundred times. <laughs> It's pretty cool, right? It gets out of the way. That's in the line six. I worked a little bit on that one. Do I warm up? Yeah, sometimes. I mostly just don't ever stop playing. Play some fun. came out. It was a little too compressed for me. This is the Line 6 uh, HX Dump that I was just using. Here it is again. Dig the name, John. 
Josh Smith music. Forget that basketball player guy. Dude, how cool is that ring mod, right? See, I've got the page of the Morning Star dedicated. That's my HX Stomp Extra Sounds. I can switch around to a few of my favorite sounds easily. I do need to come back to uh, San Antonio. Absolutely. I have a brand new instructional course on True Fire called Blue Highways that I'm very proud of and that people seem to like because. It's doing actually really well, and that makes me happy. Let's add the belief to this ring mod. Preset, here it is. Out of that to that little flashback tone print actually start on it it's a good one did I ever get stage right no uh, no I've been doing this a long time I should get an Explorer funny you say that I got a guitar coming soon that is like an Explorer because I've always wanted a V Explorer thing so I finally have a arena guitar coming uh, thoughts on legendary Japanese baseball players or Ichiro. Huge fan of Ichiro. Uh, I'm a huge fan of all baseball. It's my favorite thing. Um, and he played for us a little bit. And I, I really enjoyed when he was, was on the Yankees. And enjoyed watching him his whole career. He's a legend. And uh, I just watch all baseball. It's I can watch any game, any teams. It's matter. I'm a diehard Yankee fan, lifelong, uh, but I just love baseball a ton. So, Is my new fuzz on the board? The myriad is on the board. The big one is not on the board yet. Uh, it's coming soon. Who's the most intimidating musician that you've ever played with? Oof. Intimidating. That's a tough one, man. I don't know because some of the greatest in the world aren't very intimidating because they're so kind and welcoming. 
you know? I'd be scared, like, to play with John Schofield or something. That would be intimidating. What other hobbies apart? Well, most of my hobbies are uh, watching sports or playing video games with my son or watching stuff with my son. We're big nerds. We like comic books and sci-fi and stuff like that. And video games. Uh, I've all my friends like those pedals. I haven't actually tried any yet. I think he's gonna send me some to mess around with them because I know he's a very nice guy. We've talked a little bit. Have I ever played a big Apple Strat? No, I haven't. What console do you have in my studio? Uh, oh, console for video games. We actually have them all. Uh, Switch and uh, Xbox One X and PS4 Pro. And, and I have an emulator machine. And uh, I I play games my whole life. But now my son pretty much plays all the time. <laughs> Purple Plexi, huh? This is the big, the Echo Plexi. I'm from Florida. Okay. My whole family is from Connecticut and New Jersey. Uh, they're all lifelong Yankee fans. And growing up in Florida, the Marlins didn't exist until I was a little bit older. So I was just born into Yankee fandom as a baby. That's what I love. <laughs> They'll always be my team. Don Manningly was my hero. The only thing I ever wanted to be was a baseball player or a guitar player. And I was just better at this. Once guys start throwing breaking balls, game over. I should come to Charlotte. I would like to come to Charlotte. I would like to come everywhere. You're in the process of building a home studio any recommendations on arranging or sound treating yeah i mean it depends on what your goal is and if you're trying to keep any sound from getting out as far as neighbors go if you're trying to get sound getting out from uh neighbors then you have to go room inside a room you need a gap you need air so, so you want to you know have a wall a gap and another wall with two layers of drywall and the air in between. So, uh, if you're just talking about making it sound good and it doesn't matter how soundproof it is, then you just two in the room, which you're trying to, you know, that's a personal decision, but you obviously want to kill standing. waves and bass and things like that. I should come back to Wales. I'm sure I will be coming back to Wales. Can I show you how to play the riff for Let Me Take Care of You? Yeah, sure. It's in C minor. It goes like this.
What's your future projects in the studio? Uh, I got a lot of things coming up. I'm in the middle of producing a few records right now for a couple different artists, and uh, hopefully there'll be much more coming soon. What's the story of the Black Telly? Uh, it's made by Bill Chapin. It's been my number one for, I guess, 13 years or something like that now. Um, Bill made me a Strat first, which I loved. And I was getting ready to go out on the road with Taylor Hicks. And I needed a telly. And he was making me a Pine Body Esquire at the time. And the neck was done, but the body was not. And I knew I needed a two pickup telly. I didn't have one. And I wanted one for that tour. So I said, Bill, uh, can you hurry up and finish that Pine Body, but make it a two pickup telly? And he said, I can't, uh, but I have an Ash Body. Uh, is that fine? I said, yeah, yeah, let's do an ash body. He said, okay, to get it done as quick as you want, uh, you got to pick a solid color because I'm just going to do one coat. So I said, just paint it black. I don't care. So he sprayed the guitar black, and um, it ended up being a magical guitar, <laughs> but it was put together quickly. Alabama at any point. I don't know. I hope so. I still have a Chapin Strat. I don't, actually. Gave it to a friend. And then he got rid of it. <laughs> oh, but actually, another friend, I think, got it now. So, I think my friend Pete Who do I take my amps to for servicing? In LA, uh, Jim Foot. What pickups are in my telly? Uh, so Lawler in the neck, and this was custom wound by Bill Chapin, the guy who built the guitar, and that's kind of special. I'm not lefty, no. You can tell the text is backwards. It's just the camera it doesn't allow you to flip on Instagram. So. Jim Foot at Music Works in Lawndale. Licks in G minor. Has a stress down neck and and headstock. Oh, because the neck was a copy of the one he made for my strat, and it was what he had sitting there when he threw this guitar together. Uh, what guitar cable do I use? Uh, sinusoid. <laughs> Already found. Shit.
How'd I get all those charts transcribed? They did that. When you start feeling that your playing's leveling up, you're stuck. Uh, can I play Crossroads? I can play Crossroads, <laughs> sure. What uh, amp am I playing through? Two amps. How did I work on my chops? Uh, how much? All the time, every day. I just play all the day. As a kid, hours and hours on it. I'm playing through my Vox. Uh, Cambridge Reverb Tube 1 and my Morgan PR12. for an 18 year old guitarist take every gig you can possibly take every gig any songs with james brown inspiration of mine yeah absolutely james is a is a must especially for rhythm guitar but uh there's a song on my um still album that is a cross between a danny gatton thing and a james Thing called Brown Gatton. Mix a Danny Gatton shuffle with this. all the way back to deep roots but the older stuff than that I hope never sees the light of day <laughs> I do play 13s yes indeed do I like the Morgan MVP 23 yeah it's a solid amp especially for the price Danny was a good one yes he was what happened with Ibanez what do you mean is better than Fender or Gibson. Uh, man, that's a personal preference. If I had to play one all day long, I'd be I'm a Fender guy. I like the scale length and the single coils. Have I been to Brazil? Yes, but never to play my own music. And I'm hoping to get there soon. What was my favorite song to play with Rafael Sadiq? Man, I love so many of those songs. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of Tony Tony stuff that was cool, but I like Ray's material. I really like Sure Hope You Mean It.
as AZ. Yeah, it's a really great guitar. It actually gets used here for sessions. It's like my more modern sounding guitar. And I need that here in the studio. If trouble was money. Can I read and write music? Yes. Trouble was money, bro. Get your albacons on. Next to the Chula, what's the most used pedal on the board? Probably the H9. I use gravity 1.1 millimeter, which is like a Fender Heavy pick with a little grip on it. Right now, reverb is just from the amps. Sometimes you use reverb from the from pedals, like I'll show you. Like, uh, like this sound. I just have friends that I have miss. What do I think when improvising? All I'm worried about is what chord is next. Why never treble booster? I like treble booster sometimes in the studio, but it's not something I need in my library. So 
Thanks, guys. Thanks. When I'm writing, just tone inspire things. Sometimes, but writing is always different. Every song, sometimes lyrics comes first. Sometimes a chord melody comes first. A progression. Uh, it's always different. Uh, different in every situation. Make sure I'm not missing any more questions. It's the first thing I do when I pick up my guitar and tune. <laughs> Is the HX Somp similar to the H9? Well, it does a lot. And uh, I don't think the chord are, the sounds are quite as great as the H9, but you can use more than one at once, and it does a lot of things. And I'm very impressed with it. Am I going to be a late edition of the Blues Live Cruise next year? I don't have an answer for that one. Yet. I'm not on the Europe cruise, though. And I'm not sure yet about America. Yeah, of course. Mahogany Rush, Frank Marina. Absolutely. Crazy PSGs. How to implement 251s in a blues. Man, the best thing is to think about going from one chord to the next. So if you're in A and you're going to D, you want to play E minor, A, to lead you to so just in a solo then you can go right back by playing B E to lead you back to A and then you can do it to get to the five to get to a 2-5. So, like here, I, I'll play a 2-5 between every chord of a blues. necessary to learn jazz it's not necessary to do anything it's necessary to learn anything if it's holding you back from accomplishing what it is you want to accomplish as a musician do you have something you're trying to say things you're hearing in here that you can't do or make happen because you don't know what it is then yes it's necessary to learn it because the shit's holding you back that's the only way to learn anything you have to Brisket or pulled pork? Brisket. I'm beef guy, bro. Is flashback always on with the chula? No. Flashback isn't always on. Is there a special song I hear that I wish I wrote? <laughs> Man. A lot of great songs in the world. How do I learn scales up and down the neck so well? I don't feel like I do. I mean, I don't run scales. I more know where every note is on the neck very well. So no matter where I am, I don't feel stuck. And I don't feel like I need to jump to another position on the neck no matter what chord is coming up. Because I know it's right where I am. So I'm comfortable wherever I'm at going to whatever's next, no matter how technically weird the interval jump may be. It's all right there. And I study arpeggios. Sure. Coming back to Austin. I would like to. Oh, guys, we're out of time. Uh, 
Instagram is quitting on us. So I appreciate you all hanging out. Dominant substitutions. Uh, man, there's a lot of things. I'm over dominant chord. Uh, a lot of times I'm using tritone substitutions or I'm playing melodic minor. Um, you know, those are kind of things I'm thinking over dominant chords besides obviously blues. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. It's nice to be